Hello everyone. Uh, we are going to start with the first question of process costing, where there is no opening work in progress or closing work in progress situation, right? So let's start with the question. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, 600 tons of raw material costing 430,032 were input into the process in a period. So 600 ton is the quantity of input, right? This is the quantity of input or quantity of raw material input and 430,032 is basically the material cost. Right. Then it says that conversion cost total 119,328. Conversion cost is usually given in case of process costing because examiner wants to uh, simplify the question. So uh, despite of doing labor and overhead separately, examiner usually give us conversion cost. So that's basically something we will use. Losses in the form of rejected product are losses in the form of rejected product are normally 12% of input, right? So this is actually showing what this is actually representing the normal loss. This 12% is what this 12% is normal loss, right? And the rejected product is sold for 260 per ton. So this is the rejected product and which is sold for 260 per ton. So this 260 is actually representing what? This is actually representing the scrap proceedings from normal loss. Scrap proceedings, right? And then the question says that 530 tons of finished product pass the inspection in a period. So pass the inspection in a period. So 530 ton is actually what? Is this the expected output or is this the actual output? This is the actual output. Right. Expected output usually we have to calculate. The remaining output was sold as rejected product. There was no opening work in progress. There was no work in progress either at the beginning or at the end of the period. We are required to prepare process costing, process account, including any abnormal loss or abnormal gain. Okay. So let's start with the question. Let's see what we can do here. All right. So this is the process account. This is the process account or you can say this is the work in progress account. Work in progress this account is something which we have already prepared in uh, while you are doing cost bookkeeping. So you may connect it from there. So on the debit side we have to write all the input things. So we will start with direct material. For reference purposes we usually write the quantity of uh, material. It's not required but normally we do that. So 600 tons of raw materials were added which costed 430,032, right? What is the value of conversion cost? Conversion cost means material, labor and overhead, that's also an input thing. So that has to be taken on the debit side. So 119,328. Now the first thing which we will write on the credit side is the normal loss. Now, what is the normal loss? Normal loss is expected to be 12% of input. Right? So whatever the input quantity is, we are assume, we are expecting that 12% uh, output will be lost. So since we made an input of 600 tons of raw material, and we are expecting that there will be a 12% normal loss. So 600 times 0.12 is actually 72 tons. So 72 tons is the quantity of normal loss. Right. And so we will write 72 here as a quantity for reference. And remember, normal losses are valued on the basis of the scrap proceedings. So scrap proceedings are 260 per ton. So 72 multiplied by 260 pounds. Uh, that will be equals to around 18,720. Right. 18,720. This is what this is a scrap proceedings from normal loss that means when you sell when you will sell the normal loss you will get approximately 18720 now then we have to value the output output is something which we are transferred from work in progress to finished goods right so the actual output was around 530 tons right and output is always valued on the basis of cost per unit so now we have to calculate cost per unit now cost per unit of the product is simply input cost minus scrap proceedings from normal losses divided by expected output right 
so the input cost is around input cost is the sum of these two so 430000 and 32 plus 119000 and 328 so that means 549360 this is the input cost minus a scrap proceedings from normal losses which is 18,720 divided by the expected output now 530 is not the expected output expected output is something which we are expecting from the process so since we are assuming we, are, we were expecting that 72 tons will get lost uh, or there will be a normal wastage of 72 uh, tons that means what how much uh, quantity we are expecting as an output 600 minus 72 input minus normal losses expected output so let's calculate its cost per unit so 549360 minus 18720 divided by 600 minus 72 that will give us 1005 right 1005 per ton If you multiply it with 1005, you will get around 532,600. Right. Now, there's something which we have to calculate because there's something which is generally not given in the question. Generally, we have to identify if there is any abnormal loss or a proper gain. So, uh, 530 tons of finish. Uh, so, what? how much output we were expecting expected output was around uh, 600 minus 72 600 minus 72 sorry 528 was the expected output and the actual output is not 528 rather it's 530 so since we got more output than the expectations we will say that there is an abnormal gain of 2 tons right an abnormal gain has to be on the debit side so 2 tons multiplied by 1005 2010 so if you want to see if uh, if everything is fine or not the process account will get balanced itself you don't need to balance it it will uh, I mean, I mean, debit side would be equal to credit side plus one hundred and nineteen thousand three twenty eight plus two zero one zero is five fifty one three seventy. Okay. And on the credit side, it's eighteen thousand seven twenty plus five thirty two thousand six hundred and fifty. It's five fifty one three seventy. Okay. Now. Uh, so this is basically what this is basically the process account and now we know that considering the losses issue uh, the valuation output will be 532,650 so this is credit from the work in progress account and the debit will be made in the finished goods inventory with 532,650 as we did in the previous cost bookkeeping chapter right so this is basically how we uh, identify and how we process the process cost rate, right now i just want to ask one thing suppose uh, suppose this suppose ec right now in this case actual output was 530 let's suppose instead of 530 actual output is 521 right now tell me one thing i mean you have to think what will be its impact what will be the impact of change in actual output from 530 to 521 on cost per unit of the product you may pause this video and think for a while okay so i hope you guys have thought something see input cost is same input cost is going to remain same because we are not changing direct material input we are not changing conversion cost uh, normal loss is going to remain same because normal loss scrap proceedings from uh, quantity of normal loss will be still 72 tons and scrap proceedings from normal loss will still remain 18,720 and in the denominator uh, do you think there will be any change no 
because in denominator we consider the expected output right and expected output will remain same irrespective of what is the actual quantity so technically cost per unit will remain same and that's basically the reason why we consider expected output in denominator because if you consider actual output the cost per unit will vary all the time because there is uh, there is usually a, a abnormal loss or abnormal gain both can happen so your cost per unit will continuously change so that's basically the reason why we keep expected output in the denominator in order to you know keep a consistent cost per unit right so that's the end of uh, this first question in the next lecture we will do the second question uh, and we will do some entries uh, what i mean what will be the entry of normal loss output and everything and then you will start with closing work in progress all right take care thank you bye bye